Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Dark Sack. I am Dark, and today we're gonna be, we are going to be taking a look at the room Ignite on Trihack Me. Uh, this is a room that I made as a collaboration with one of the uh, current Trihack Me mods, uh, Paradox, and it is a really excellent CTF, especially if you want something that's not terribly difficult, but will still challenge you a little bit, especially if you are graduating from a lot of the easier, more handholdy CTFs like uh, Blue. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. In this case, I've gone ahead and already joined the room and connected to the TriHack Me VPN. You'll have to do that before you start. Uh, and then I've gone ahead and deployed the actual room here. So let's go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to jump over to the terminal so we can start scanning this box. Jumping over to the terminal, we can go ahead and start our scan with the command mmap dash s capital V. That is going to be version enumeration dash capital s capital c. Uh, that is going to run common scripts. So it'll go through and check a bunch of other things for us dash o capital a that is going to be output all formats we'll do that in the scans directory i've gone ahead and created that before all this and we'll name it initial and we'll paste in our box ip here uh, in this specific case i've gone ahead and already run this for the sake of time so we'll go ahead and clear the screen and let's take a look at that scan output and we'll view the nmap version of that in this case so there we go uh, we can see in this case uh very strangely, uh, there are there's only one port open on this box, and it appears to be port 80. Typically, you'll see things like SSH, so port 22 open, along with a variety of other services. However, in this case, it appears just to be a web server. Uh, so looking at these results, we can see port 80. Uh, there's one disallowed entry in robots.txt that might be worth checking out. Uh, this is most absolutely an Ubuntu box from the uh, first look at it. And then it looks like it's running a service called Fuel CMS. Let's go ahead and jump over to the web server, or to the uh, web browser rather, and we'll take a look at what we have here. So we'll paste this in, and we'll see what's running. And we get welcome to Fuel CMS. Um, we have a version here. It looks like this is a website that has been partially set up. Now, this is very interesting to us because anything that's partially set up, and even here it's giving us an admin. Uh, username and password <laughs> you should change this password and admin user after logging in um, this is a potential that we could go through and explore the actual admin page here with this username and password however that's going to end up being a giant rabbit hole um, what we can do first rather is take a look at the version information here at the top and we're actually going to take a look and see if there's any issues with this version Jumping over to this tab, we can see I've already got exploit DB open and I've gone ahead and already searched for fuel CMS. And sure enough, for the version 1.4.1, there is a remote code execution flaw. Now, what's interesting about this is this is not exactly the version that we have. However, if we take a look at the exploit code, we can see that this works on any version lower than 1.4 or lower than or equal than rather to version 1.4.1. So we likely have a vulnerable installation here, uh, and this is going to grant us some remote code execution. We can go ahead and copy this over, or you can just use the download link right here, or use search point to grab this. Um, and we're going to go ahead and proceed back in our terminal. So we'll jump out of this, and we're going to go ahead and move to the exports directory that I've gone ahead and created. And we can see that I've already made a fuelcms.py. Now, one important note, this exploit runs in Python 2. That is an important distinction. If you try to run it in Python 3, things are going to break. Uh, let's go ahead and nano fuelcms.py, and we can see that there are some minor modifications that I have made to this exploit code. So here we can see that I've gone ahead and changed the URL to be my target box, and then there's some uh, proxy lines in here. So I've changed this to remove um, the burp proxy because we're not actually using burp suite in this case. Uh, that may be beneficial if you are having some issues here to turn on burp suite and send this request through that as you're going to get some, it, it'll be easier to actually repeat these requests. However, this exploit actually works pretty well on its own. So we've got that all set up. Let me make sure I have the right IP there. 174.126 and there we go. So we'll go ahead and head back to the terminal and we'll close that. I'm going to make this actually a little bit bigger for you guys as well. We'll do Python fuel CMS. And we're given a command prompt. Uh, let's go ahead and try running who am I to see if we get any output. Give it a moment. And there we go. Looks like we're getting a full web page back. And we can go ahead and scroll up in this. And we can see, sure enough, at the very top of it, we do have a system output of www-data. 
Now that is direct output of our command, who am I? So that shows that we have achieved remote code execution on this server. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over to a new tmux tab here, and I'm gonna go ahead and start a netcat listener on my favorite port, the DNS port, port 53, because this is seldom blocked in the firewall. And we're gonna go ahead and start our listener so that we can send ourselves a reverse shell. Jumping back over to the Python code, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a reverse shell. This is from just uh, the Pentest Monkey reverse shell cheat sheet. And I'll go ahead and grab this here. I'll grab this part and we'll paste that in. And then I need to type just a few other things. 4.3 and then we'll do 53, which is gonna get us uh, to our DNS port. And we'll do piping or putting that into the temp and then F and we should be able to go ahead and run this. And there we go. So we've got a reverse shell that has been sent back to us. Uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do first is confirm that this is working with command execution, and sure enough, we can see that we do have a working terminal. Uh, with this, I'm actually gonna go ahead and upgrade my terminal first because we're gonna need it later on. You can do this with the command python-c to run a command, import pty, pty.spawn, and we'll do bin bash. You can spawn whatever shell you want here. And we'll go to the end and we'll close our parentheses. And we should have an interactive prompt. And there we go. So we can see that we've got our full prompt proper. There's a couple other things that you can do before this, but our RL wrap um, helps us quite a bit here. So we've got command execution and a reverse shell from our target server. Let's go ahead and see. We can go ahead and grab the, we'll do word count and then ls home we'll see what home directories we have it looks like just a www data we can do word count home www data and then we'll do user.txt never mind let's go ahead and change to well, ls home www data and oh it's a flag.txt uh, we'll go ahead and do a word count on that data flag.txt and we can see that it has 34 characters uh, and that is going to be our flag. Um, so we've gone ahead and gained user. Uh, with this, uh, we're going to go ahead and move into privilege escalation. So with this, uh, let's go ahead. We can start scouting around the web server. One of the first things that I like to do other than running a local privilege escalation script is to actually go through and try to find the config file for the website that I've just uh, owned. Uh, a lot of times you can find issues like password reuse, or you can start logging into other services as different users to get other loot from uh, things that you find in the config file. So we can go ahead, let's see what's in our current directory. Looks like we have a fuel directory. Let's CD into that, see what we got. There's an application directory, we'll CD into application, ls, and then we'll go into this config folder here, CD config. And we can see, sure enough, we should have a database.php file here. Uh, let's cat database.php. And we can see we have a username and password for the root database user. And we have this password, me, 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 me. Um, what we can do now is attempt to see maybe that password was reused uh, for the actual root account on this box. So we can do sue, and then we'll do a dash, and we'll try the password. And we'll give it a moment. And there we go. So we've successfully rooted this box and we can go ahead and do a word count, root, uh, root.txt, let's see if that's correct. And there we go, we can see that's 34 characters and that is our flag. That's gonna do it for today. Uh, if you have any questions, I have the official TriHackMe server as well as the DarkSec Discord servers linked below. Uh, follow me on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube for more videos like this. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time.